so there's a, a, the, the ability for you to kind of type into the portal. Uh, let me know if there are any problems with the audio, with the visual, um, and we can get that fixed. Um, so, yep, I think we can get started. So thanks for joining us, uh, staying ahead of state regulations. Uh, this is a special session, so it'll be a little bit different from the typical webinar. Um, we will definitely be going into the product, but we want to spend a little bit of time um, actually going over kind of our thought process why we built out state regulations and what we, where we really see um, uh, that area going. So for the agenda today, I'll, I'll go over who's presenting, a couple of updates on uh, the company, we'll do a little bit of a 101, and then really the rest of this presentation is going through um, kind of what state regulations means to fiscal note, and then would love to take questions at the end, but if as we're presenting you have any questions, feel free to type those in and we might be able to field them. So I am Amanda Winter, your Client Education Manager. You hear from me a little bit. Um, and I'm joined today by, by Daryl Hawk. Hello, everybody. Excited to meet you. Um, thanks for having me, Amanda. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so quickly, a couple of updates from the company. Uh, so we actually had kind of a cohort of interns come in this summer doing a lot of political research. And a couple of the things they kind of found out this summer, um, looking at state legislatures and social media, um, that the safety review uh, is the most central in Florida. Um, there are other kind of tips online, so the, that, that was pretty interesting. Um, we also did some census analysis looking at uh, employment across industries, and that it looks like in Nevada, food and accommodation, uh, whereas agriculture in California is, is kind of the major one. Again, some of that is on our blog online, so you can check that out. Uh, this is an exciting one that we found out last week that we'll be um, kind of joining a number of tech companies and take off election day um, in order to kind of encourage the company to get out and you know, perform our civic duty in, in this election season. Um, and then lastly, if anyone is in D.C. and doesn't have plans this afternoon, we're actually hosting our first community happy hour at Rural Society over here in Thomas Circle right near our office. So would love to um, see you if you're able to join us. All right, so we can just start off uh, State Regs 101. Uh, the thing behind this webinar is that we know a lot of clients um, may not be tracking state, uh, sorry, state regulations right now. Um, a number of you online do have our state regulatory product, so we hope that this is kind of educational for you as well. Um, but then for anyone who's interested, uh, please feel free to kind of throw us some questions um, we're happy to share. Uh, so starting from the beginning. What do you, what, what, how do we want to start this, Daryl? So uh, I want to start by actually just highlighting policy uh, from the very front because a lot of times on the state level specifically, uh, there are a lot of different terms that are used. Sometimes they call it the administrative code, et cetera, et cetera. So this allows us to be all on the same page. But uh, on the left side is legislation. So that's where the focus of uh, government affairs professionals on state levels typically is, where they'll look at the bills, pop them, uh, follow them after they, they, get, they pop up, um, try to affect them as they can, and then once they're done with that process, they enter the statutes. Um, at that point, that's where the state regulatory process begins. That's where we pull it, and we created this platform focused on that area. And that's where the rules are implemented to properly uh, put those statutes into place, and then everything gets finalized in the code. So just to make sure we're all on the same page with uh, what any terms that we use, the code will be anything after the rules process, the statutes would be anything before that, and the bills would be the start of the process. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, kind of starting from the beginning, seems to be this cradle to grave platform, right? So, as you're tracking your policy areas, your policy issues, the moment that they're introduced as legislation, spending time building relationships with these chambers and trying to move legislation in kind of in your direction. Um, after that, there's an entire process that happens with the statute and then going into these state agencies that we recognize, kind of recognize a need and, and figured out that that data is out there, to, at least to some degree, um, varying oftentimes. And so that's where, uh, that's where we thought we could come in. And so here's an image of the platform, our state legislative platform. So I'm sure you're aware, you've been following, very familiar with this. At the end of the process is where a lot of states actually say which public act or which public law it gets finalized in. And then that's when it enters the statutes, the statutes change, and then from there, a lot of times on the regs themselves, they do mention the specific bills, or they just mention the statutes that give it authority to make whatever change that they're looking to make. 
Right. So, you know, you can see here, um, it says Public Act 990823. Um, oftentimes that then is a uh, reference to the statute. And right now the, the platform doesn't actually uh, address the statute part, um, but, you know, that, that is actually in our, in, our roadmap, in our roadmap going forward. And so, what is in state regulation? Um, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of different teams. So some teams that have dealt with it every single day. So particularly the insurance companies are very heavily related on the state level. But then other teams are just starting or other teams that are wondering should they start. So um, to begin, there's the state register that is a, a compilation of a lot of the different state agencies. And any rules that come out within those agencies get, get put together in the state register, kind of like a, a magazine. So there might be a, once every two weeks, once every week, maybe once a month. Um, and so as a the more general level, there's a state register that captures uh, information from several different agencies and then looking at that one register you'll able to you'll be able to figure out what's going on um, and so that's how every state has some register of some sorts uh, varying levels some of them are very detailed others only tell you a notice that there is something that's going on but don't actually give you the text of what that reg is yeah and for those states you have to actually jump directly into the state agencies yeah, well, we'll actually go over, and I think we, we take a look at what one of these registers actually looks like. Um, the, the key here for us is that across all the industries, you have numerous agencies that are addressing different topics. So pharmaceuticals, insurance, education, and that goes across, right, agriculture, transportation. As one company, you may be impacted by multiple agencies, right? So you're not just tracking one topic area. You're looking across a number of agencies in various amounts of states, right, from two to three to all 50. Um, and so really here, similar to the kind of idea with the legislative product, is that there is so much data. And right now, there, or right now, there really was no um, kind of manageable way of really keeping track of that data over time. I uh, actually wanted to ask a question. So um, you'll see kind of a poll pop up. Uh, we're just curious, right, from, from those of you that are uh, on this call, um, you know, how many of you are tracking state regulations? Um, you know, either you yourself or whether someone on your team or someone else in your organization. Uh, so if you don't mind uh, taking this poll and you can just click, click the answer there and then I'll be able to um, pop us out of that screen. I'll just give it a couple more seconds to let people answer. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much for, uh, for answering that. So just for kind of an overview, it looks like um, overwhelmingly, people are tracking state regulations, so that's really exciting. Uh, one thing for us is whether you have fiscal note state regulations or not, it's interesting for us to hear kind of what you're doing now. Um, so we'll be interested to ask you that a little bit later. Great. So we've talked about kind of the basis of state regulations. What does this process look like? Where does it fit into the legislative process? Um, so let's just talk now, like what, what, you know, what is this data? You know, what is it now? What, what are these websites? Um, and what is the challenge that, you know, you, many of you may be facing um, right now? Yeah, this is uh, directly synthesized from the research, uh, the conversation I've had with a lot of different uh, teams. So maybe it's not familiar, maybe it doesn't, but uh, a lot of times what I've heard is, the teams would know the schedules of the register, so every state would have their standardized schedule, whether it's frequent or infrequent. They would know when it would be published and then look back at those states that were published by the time, if they check it every Friday, look at everything that's published from Monday to Thursday, et cetera, and then check the table of contents. So primarily, uh, people would know which agencies deal with their topics. So they want to see if it's Department of Health that I care about, uh, I'll go into the table of contents, see if it's there, and then specifically look through all those regs within there. Um, once I find ones that are relevant, then what do I do? I would have to put it in a spreadsheet, um, usually to put the basic information. Um, if you're following really well, you know some of the states, you'll know there's a state like Indiana, which doesn't have titles. Um, so make up some sort of title, put some link of the information, maybe put the contact information or relevant dates. Um, and then, then as a, the weeks progress and just continuing the process. Um, and so part of the pain points that I'll address a little bit later is 
something that's consistent for a lot of the people is that a state is going to release the regulations separately as separate entities. Some states do have tracking numbers. Not all states do. Several states do not actually. And so the part of the problem is whenever you see a reg pop up, it says a final version. Is that a new reg that you've never seen before, or is it uh, an update of the previous reg that's already in your spreadsheet? So what that means for you is you'd have to look through the spreadsheet. If this is your process, you have to look through the spreadsheets, read through what you have for that state, what you have for that state agency, and then determine is this the same one, is it not the same one? Um, and often a big frustration we've actually seen by looking at the data themselves when we were gathering this is a lot of times it's a number that looks like it's a tracking number, but it's actually just a unique number that really means nothing in terms of tracking it through the process. And I define tracking as uh, finding about something that's for the first time, and then when another thing pops up that's related to that first thing, automatically updating, because uh, otherwise it's just discovering back and forth. So there is no tracking number for a lot of different states. And so what we had to do on our end when I talk about a little bit more of the, the tech side of stuff, is we had to create these tracking numbers, create them based off patterns that we've seen, um, do some rigorous testing to make sure the quality is right, because uh, what's worse than not being able to track is getting improper tracking. Um, so we had to do multiple rounds of testing, jump into it, and contacting law states to see if they had any method uh, to do this properly. Right. It, it, what was interesting kind of in this research and then working with the product team is that it's, it's that the states don't really make it conducive to, to track this information, right? Um, I think it's, it's, probably, it's probably part of their job to at least post information. Um, but, and, and as you can see here, this is an example of when South Dakota publishes, um, but that would, that would mean that you as an organization have to know that about South Dakota and then have to know that about all other states and then consciously check on this website every Monday and then for the other 49 states do that across the board. Um, so again, the, the pain point here was that it's not really conducive to keeping up on not only one agency but many agencies, all the registers and all the rules that are relevant to your organization. Yeah, exactly. And resulting in that is just um, a lot of times, so the teams specifically that don't really need to do this that closely, just decide that it's not that big a, it's not really worth it to spend that much time to track something on a state level. If it's just a state like, uh, say they did them do business in um, as a one of the core, like maybe something like South Dakota, uh, instead they let that slip through the cracks a little bit. Um, because more often than not, the chances are that it's not something that will be relevant within that document. But then, the flip side is that is when there is something that is relevant, uh, a lot of times they, they mention their, their boss or their trade association would say, hey, um, did you know about this? And they wouldn't really know about it. Right, right. It's kind of the proactive um, being the one to alert either your members or your internal stakeholders without having to hear about it on the front end, right? Because what does that mean? What does it mean to hear about it on that end? It means that something is about to impact the business, the bottom line of your organization, and you didn't know about it ahead of time. Uh, so. For example, uh, this is an example of the New York Register, right, Daryl? Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about this. So this is uh, meant to represent just what the registers entail. Another common thing that is uh, essentially unnecessary time spent on stuff is the fact that a register is going to have a lot of agencies that you're not going to care about. In this example, if you care about the Department of Health, once again, you could see there's higher education right under that, liquor authority. Before that, the environmental and the civil service. Those aren't going to be relevant to your organization, but if you have to check on it, every single time you look on the register, it's not really going to be customized to you. It's more of just, I'll read through this newspaper to see if any articles apply to me, but um, it, what would be ideal is if the articles are sent directly to me because those are topics I care about. Right. And so the next slide, um, we actually wanted to show some examples. Uh, a lot of this right now is, is the generalization of states, but I want to share some examples of specific states that um, I'm aware we've seen that uh, they have particularly caused some problems because the data quality in those states aren't that strong. Same time, if anyone here is uh, working for those states, it would be great if we could get some of this uh, organized in a, a proper fashion that would make sense for people who are trying to follow it. Um, but to start, uh, here's New Mexico. So New Mexico does not have titles. So this is an example of a state that doesn't have a title. You can see these are for the proposed regs. It's called Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, which really has no significance. What that means is you might need to click into it. It's an agency you care about, but what the agency is releasing four notices, click through all of them, read through all of them, and then somehow determine that it's relevant or not. Um, so what we've done on our side for this specific case is every single reg has its own generic rule, uh, or generic title if there is no title. So what that means is it would be the state, the agency, the date, and some sort of count if there's multiple ones within the date. But right under that, we've created a feature in which you could nickname the rules 
we want to. So through the, the interviews, a lot of people say that they would call different regs like the EpiPen reg of Indiana. Um, and so that's the way they reference it within whenever they talk to uh, the trade association, whenever they talk to colleagues. And so for that reason, we put that as a feature to allow the ability specifically if there is no title, but also even if there is a title, maybe the title isn't that descriptive. Um, if you imagine this is New Mexico, uh, there are some other states that are a little bit better, but still the, the title doesn't give up much. It's not like a bill in which there is a bill number. Um, and a lot of times there may be reg numbers, but no one really refers to them with those reg numbers. It might be extremely specific just for that state. Yeah, and you know another example of a limitation uh, would, would be Georgia. So Georgia doesn't actually provide any of its information for free, right? So as a public citizen, I'm looking for uh, agency information. Um, they don't actually provide the proposed regulation, the proposed rule, um, or the final rule uh, for free. We actually have to purchase um, final rules in order to present them in the system. So again, uh, in that way, it's kind of bringing information that actually wasn't accessible at all um, to the user, to you who may be impacted by uh, Georgia, Georgia rules. Yeah, exactly. So Georgia is a state in which there is a paywall no matter what to see the regs. So we decided we, we've purchased a distribution license for Georgia, but even so we've requested having to propose regs uh, so someone can have the full process. They actually have told us that they don't have the proposed regs in any sort of fashion. Um, instead, we were only able to obtain the final regs, which means Georgia would be important for a compliance type of use, use case or just to know what's going on. Um, but to actually know it's in the process, for Georgia, you would have to probably go into agencies themselves and have those type of relationships, and that's just by nature of the state itself. Mm -hmm. um, and Georgia is an important state. There's, there are companies like Coca-Cola there, um, large, large companies in Atlanta. And so we didn't want to not have it on the platform, but at the same time, we're only able to uh, get the information that the state is able to provide us. Mm -hmm. And then Hawaii. Hawaii is our company's favorite state with regard to state uh, regulations um, because, as we will show you, Hawaii doesn't really provide information at all. So just to give you an example, right, this is the Hawaii register site. If we go to the most recently um, released register, uh, this is the information provided, um, this one page. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, right, we aren't able to actually show you anything from Hawaii's um, agencies because it provides kind of these numbers that I'm, we are assuming um, kind of collate to a larger document that isn't actually on this site. Um, so just as kind of an example of the limitations we face in providing the information, but also more importantly, the limitations that we know you must be facing as you're looking for um, this kind of information, this kind of crucial information. Exactly. So as you see, those are some mentions of the, the code itself that's being amended. Um, what right now we're actively trying to contact the state of Hawaii to see if there is anything they could do to help give more context, particularly for um, anyone who's interested in tracking anything in Hawaii. Right. All right. So, we, I mean, I think kind of the point of this is that um, wanting to help you understand where state regulations fits in and where fiscal note fits in, but also recognizing um, kind of what, what we're able to do. Um, so then it's, you know, what, what did we actually build? Um, so similar to the way that, you know, you use the state legislative and the federal legislative and federal regulatory product, um, we built a database and then a platform on top of that database that provides timely updates. So as opposed to going through the process that Daryl outlined earlier, right, of knowing the schedule of agencies, checking those websites every week, bi-weekly, updating a spreadsheet, and then having to actually connect the dots yourself, um, giving you updates on relevant information based on keywords similar to your discovery alerts uh, now. Um, organized information, so actually linking those rules together so that when you see the proposed rule, you'll then see any of the follow-up any of the follow-up um, documents after that. Um, a centralized hub, so as you know, it's pulling in data as well as allowing you to manipulate that data. So place them into folders, um, look at mass distributions of where the majority of your information lives, and then on top of that, actionable insight. So once you've gathered this information, you could say at the end of a month, at the end of a quarter, here are where, um, you know, here are where these rules came down. It's looking at taking data and then being able to move forward um, after that. Yeah, exactly. So we tried, when releasing this, uh, this product, we, we tried to really address some, some core 
uh, value propositions. So the first of which is to centralize all information so it's all in one place. If you need to do any sort of search, if someone just asks you about a topic or you're curious, you can do a search. It searches through every single state regulation and then pulls it up very quickly. Then secondly is the ability to track. And like I, I mentioned, track defined as I care about this upon introduction, upon which it's first proposed. So I want to receive every future notification automatically without having to do any digging. And I want that to be connected with the first piece, which I already said was important. Um, and so what we've done for those uh, is we really focus on getting the data right, structuring across all the states, uh, making sure it's fully comprehensive. And then on top of that, um, as you can see for one of the we do provide supplementary documents, um, for simplicity, we're talking about how we take the register, we break down to each individual regulation we give it to you. What we actually do is we go uh, faster by going to the actual databases that a lot of states do have. So we get them before registers may be published. A lot of times it's online first. So we've created the scrapers that we use for legislation as well. So we've created a full set of scrapers for regulations. Um, they, they dive into those, they find them all, categorize them properly. So we obtain the information directly before it's even published on the register, as soon as it's online. And then from there, we are able to provide anything supplementary. So there are a lot of times business impact statements. There would be pre-proposal notices, so drafts of some sort, maybe some changes. Um, if you're a good state like uh, Connecticut, they might have a full scale, every single document that's ever been uh, talked about, including when the governor or the secretary of state has to uh, talk about as well, or the attorney general, for instance. Um, so we give you, at that point, we're able to provide one central source, the ability to track, the ability to have all supplementary documents so you know the actual impact of how important these regs are. And then on top of that, when the comment periods, the hearing dates, the contact information of who to talk to, when they're all present, we identify that as well. So it's very much actionable. If I do want to set up a meeting with my regulator in my state regarding this regulation, I know who to talk to, I know when to submit my comments, uh, and I know when to attend the hearings. Um, on the flip side of things, if you're uh, familiar with our federal regulatory platform, there's a lot of analysis on the comments. So all the comments on the federal, federal side are online. We take that, we apply our sentiment technology. So we determine which ones are pro this reg, which ones are con, what portions they're really talking about. On the state level, that's different. On the state level, the comments are not online. There are very few comments to start. Um, a lot of the comments aren't online. For some states, they may be, and so they're attached to the documents that we have. Um, but so that's one thing that we do not provide. Um, and so one thing to differentiate our federal platform with our state platform. The valid propositions are different. Um, the ones that we look to address are the ones I mentioned a little bit earlier. Awesome. Uh, and so Daryl's kind of going into uh, into the product. So I wanted to jump in and, and give us a look um, at the actual platform. Uh, you'll see it's it is the same platform uh, that you use today, um, but where that lives is actually here in the Omnibar. This is where you would select from the, the databases. You'll see here state regulation. So we'll select state regulations and then search the database. So similar to the search bar that you've seen, but with separate filters to go over those, you know, you would select by state. Um, select by the status of the rule. So, you know, as, as Daryl mentioned earlier, if someone's looking kind of on the compliance side and needs to find out, are there any rules um, that were released within a certain date range, for example, that might impact us? Based on a keyword search, I can find all the final rules that match um, that keyword. And one thing about status that's interesting is that because we're able to connect these, the life cycle of the rule, uh, I'll just call it that, the fact that this rule went from proposal to final, we actually update the status of that rule. So whereas if you treat them all separately, then it would just be a count of every single final rule would have a separate count for propose as in its first stage. Um, but what we've done is we've updated that and then we actually put these counts. So anything that's gone from proposal to the final stage is now considered a status of final. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and then lastly here, the type, because as, as we're talking kind of the supplementary documents as well. Um, we, we actually decided earlier just to show you um, kind of the value here, you know, as you create your discovery alerts, um, you know, for legislation, for federal regulation, the idea of creating a state regulation discovery alert is, is, is pretty novel, right? So as we mentioned earlier, tracking on the state regulatory level is, doesn't really exist because of the way that the government provides this information. Now you'd be able to, based on your policy areas, actually search over and be alerted to regulate to rules either when they are proposed or when they're final. So again, this is kind of summating all of that process, summating the searching, the schedules, 
reading through the register, saving on a spreadsheet. You're actually getting emails based on your policy priorities of newly, newly kind of proposed rules. Uh, and then again, you know, as usual, kind of adjusting the preference of, of how, how often you'd like to get that. Um, I have an example here that we can just look at what that looks like. So this is a pretty general um, education um, discovery alert. So you'll see it gives you the, the results just like it would with regulations and, and just like it would with legislation. If we click here into the card. Um, so you'll notice here this nickname the regulation name name the regulation. Um, as you are using the platform and kind of adding adding in your input, um, this also will be searchable across the platform. So instead of searching for a particular number and date and state, you'll be able to search for, like Daryl said earlier, like EpiPen uh, regulation and find that within the system. Let's see here, I'll find one for us to jump into. Amanda, can you actually go into uh, yep. a general search for Connecticut? So Connecticut is going to be an example of a very, of one of the, essentially the one of the best states for state regulations. Sure. Um, they have several, several, uh, several separate documents from the beginning to the corrected version to um, the final version to any impact statements. So we're able to get those all and then classify them. Let's jump into this one here. Awesome. So this is a rule page. Uh, so again, the name of this regulation here, then all this information, right, we're going to provide that ID in case you need to kind of uh, note it somewhere, uh, but we think that the name and then your nickname will actually be more helpful. You'll see the status of this rule, and then all of the documents, as Daryl was mentioning. So you'll see here, these little circles are actually just to show you what kind of information we're providing, so the proposal text. Um, impact statement, and then what's great here is that clicking in will actually take you um, to that to that rule, as opposed to searching through pages and pages of a register, will take you straight to that document. And also on the top left, uh, so for as many things as we can, a lot of times there are summaries that are out there, just so you don't need to dive into the complete rule without having to do a summary, without knowing what it's about. Um, and so for the ones, the states that do have them, them like that, for states that there's some that's pretty good for a purpose, we try to present that. The idea is on this page, we want to give you as much insight as possible into whether you do need to jump into it, read through the regs. We know that regs are very, um, very dense a lot of times, very long. So for those reasons, we try to give you some insight so you know when's the hearing, where are the people. For this one, this is an example which there is no hearing. Um, but uh, any of the contact information, if you actually go down a little bit. Yep. It's over there as well. So whatever the states are able to provide us, we try to push it forward and give it to you all in one place. Yep. And then, and then lastly, for those of you who are using uh, our collaboration tools, you're able then to take notes, um, leave actions, and um, kind of have discussion on these rules. So, and this this is kind of where we're, we're seeing kind of a longer vision, right? You're tracking policy areas, you're tracking legislation, you're doing you know actions, you're logging your information, but then you're moving from the legislative process into the regulatory process. Uh, th this was this was actually a question I had for Daryl earlier. It's like you know, it doesn't seem like maybe a lot of people are doing this, or or from your research, um, it seemed like it was kind of difficult. Like why is this why is this important, or or, or why really should they care? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question, and this is the core of uh, what I look to, to find the answer to at the very start, because if it didn't really matter, we wouldn't want to go down this rabbit hole and try to make this platform, invest our resources. Um, but ultimately what we found is, so back to the very beginning, so the process begins with bills, but it doesn't end with bills. So the bill process until the statutes are made, that's the first step. So when you are able to get or fight so hard to get a bill you really want to pass and it finally does pass, there is still opportunity that on the reg level that whoever was against that bill or maybe the, the regulars just don't really know how to regulate it properly, that ultimately the end goal of, of fighting so hard at the very beginning does not, does not go all the way. And it, the result is just something that um, leads to more work in the long run or, or the, the, re, the need to do it all over again. Um, so that's one. So that's because the, the bill process is very important but it is only part of the process, and this gives you a more holistic view of affecting the change or influencing uh, as, as you need. And then for the flip side is, this is more on the opportunistic perspective. So a lot of things do go start in the bill process, but there are things that don't. Um, if, a, if the statutory authority is already there, if, a, and if an agency needs to do some sort of changes, 
Um, some agencies have more power than others. So it was Iowa, um, or it was Ohio, some one of them with the I. Um, they are able to do essentially the, skip the bill process, or they've done that before. And so uh, by having access very simply to know the information of what's going on, it allows you to be one to select people uh, to influence those that are needed, or essentially to educate the regulators. A lot of times when speaking to the regulators directly, they want the they have to manage as a DMV self-driving car how to manage or put those regulations for self-driving cars. They'll want the expertise. They can make sure they're doing it in the right way. And so on the flip side of it is it allows you to be very close to the regulatory process and um, really just educate to, to make sure that everything's regulated properly because as we know, the process is very long all overall. So if something is done the wrong way, um, I guess there could be an emergency regulation that's released to fix it, but at the same time, they might have to go through the full process over again. And that's something that uh, neither the regulators nor nor the people nor the companies want. Okay, awesome. Well, I mean, I think kind of overall, it, it kind of harkens back to um, one of the messages that we've been kind of um, through these webinars, through some of the other educational content, is is really the idea of of being able to wield your influence, right? So there are relationships that you have on the legislative side um, with different legislators, with different chambers. You understand kind of the the lay of the land, um, but the state regulatory area uh, landscape is a little bit more opaque, right? Um, impenetrable if you're if you're Hawaii, right? Uh, and so the idea here being giving you the ability to be influential at this late stage, rather than kind of holding up at the legislative um, at the legislative level, um, is really where where we saw this as as valuable. Um, so that was kind of the overview. I think that we covered all the questions we had. We want to give you a chance to ask any questions that you might have, um, and then I actually have one last poll. If you don't mind answering, uh, that would be great. And we'll just hold off here for any questions for a couple of seconds. And then if we don't have any questions, we can give you back a little bit of your time. Okay, um, so I don't think we have any questions. Uh, again, thank you, Daryl, for joining us and giving us a little insider, insider scoop into the product. Um, you can always reach us at support at fiscalnote.com. Um, and we thank you for joining. Uh, hope this was helpful and look, look forward to any feedback that you have um, after this. So um, have a great rest of the week. And if you're able to join us tonight, uh, Rural Society, we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks so much.